when they went down in Egypt. And the book going to let you know that. Go ahead and continue reading. And also that nation whom they shall serve. Wait a minute. He said also that nation. He didn't say those nations. Because when Israel got scattered this last time, then they were scattered throughout all nations, the Lord said. That's it, right. But now the Lord said that nation. What mm -hmm. nation? But, uh, Egypt. That, that is the nation mm -hmm. that he's dealing with here. Go ahead and read on. Will I judge? And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Go ahead. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Uh -huh. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Now, skip down and read the 18th verse. Go ahead and read. And Lord's going to give uh, Abraham some boundaries of the promised land mm -hmm. here. Go ahead and read on. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, uh -huh. unto, unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt uh -huh. unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Now, you know, we all know where the great river Euphrates is. That's over in the Middle East, mm -hmm. right? So we understand that promised land is over there. It is not here like you have some people teach, because there are even people that teach that this is the promised mm -hmm. land. But the book is very clear because the Lord gave uh, uh, Abraham some specific boundaries as sure. to where the promised land mm -hmm. is. So now, the Lord made this covenant with Abraham, and he said, you know, this covenant, uh, Abraham, this land will belong to you and your seed, even for an everlasting That's covenant. right. Now, let's go over to uh, 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 Genesis chapter 16, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. We're going to just walk it all the way down. Genesis 16. And began at verse 1, 16 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children. Uh -huh. And she had an handmaid in Egyptians whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Uh -huh. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. Uh -huh. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Uh -huh. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. Now, this was all about Sarah wanting a child. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? This was all about the flesh. It didn't have nothing to do with nothing else. Right. It had nothing to do with no covenant, no promise, or nothing. It was all about the flesh. Sarah wanted a child. She had gotten old, and her wife, and, 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 and she had not bad children. So now she wanted a child. So she said, Abraham, go into my hand, made and get me a child. Then once Abraham did it, then she became angry about it. And she put the woman out of her house. Now skip down to uh, verse 9 and continue reading. Go ahead and read. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, mm -hmm. Return to thy mistress and submit thyself unto her hand. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Now this was Haggai's child here, mm -hmm. and his name was Ishmael, and out of Ishmael came the people that we know as the Arabs today. Mm -hmm. And that is who Abraham wanted the Lord to make the covenant with. But the Lord going to tell him, no, that's not the case. You know, I'm gonna, you, your wife Sarah going to have a child, and I'm going to make my covenant with him. Mm. Go ahead, continue reading now. 11. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael. Go ahead. Because the Lord hath heard thy, thine affliction. Go ahead, read. And he will be a wild man, uh -huh. and his hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. Now, this is people that you know as the Arabs today, and truly this is the case. Mm -hmm. The book says he will be a wild man, and his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. Yeah, right. And if you look at their history, they have been fighting ever since their existence got started. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you go back and read about the Crusades, that was Ishmael's yeah, children. You right. understand what I'm saying? And they just fight all of the time. Who is it that you always see fighting nowadays? You see Ishmael That's over right. there in the land, right, right, don't you? And when they can't find nobody else to fight, they fight against one another. But his hand going to be against every man, mm. and every man's hand against him. Go ahead and read some more. What verse out? In the middle of 12. Go ahead and read it. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brothers. And he's going to dwell in, all, in the presence of all his brothers. You know, it's going to be 12 of them, and they will dwell in the presence of all their brothers. And all of them dwell together right over there in the Middle East, don't you? That's right. Now, Israel came out of 12 too, right? But mm -hmm. what happened to Israel? They got scattered That's everywhere. Right. But that was not the case with Ishmael. 
He going to dwell in the midst of all his brothers and all of them are right there in that little area known as the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Everything is in line according to the scripture. Please. That's right. All you have to do is just understand the scripture and you will always know what it is that you're looking at. Let's go to uh let's go now to uh Genesis chapter 17 and we'll begin reading at verse 1. Genesis 17 and we'll begin reading at verse 1. 17 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, uh -huh. the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Go ahead. And I will make my covenant between me and thee uh -huh. and will multiply thy seed, will multiply thee exceedingly. Go ahead. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Uh -huh. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. So now he's telling Abraham, you know, I'm going to change your name from Abraham to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Because a father of many nations have I made you. And Abraham is a father of many nations. As I said earlier, he's the father of Israel. He's the father of Ishmael. He's the father of Edom. And he's the father even of some other nations right. as well. Go ahead and continue reading though. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Uh -huh. And I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. Uh -huh. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. And thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And he said I'm going to make this covenant with you Abraham. And it will be an everlasting covenant. Mm. And I'm going to establish this covenant with you. Go ahead, continue reading. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee uh -huh. the land wherein thou art a stranger. Go ahead. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So now this, this seed here that he's referring to, that is Israel. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to give you the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. It does not matter. You understand what Israel do? This must be fulfilled. Israel must possess that land forever. Now, we understand about the history of Israel. You know, they got in the land. They messed up. Lord kicked them out, brought them back. They messed up again, got kicked out again. Mm. They was in and out. You understand what I'm saying? Now, yeah, but you're going back because this must That's be right. fulfilled right here. Right. You know, this covenant is etched in stone. There's nothing nobody can do to change. I don't care how much Israel mess up. They must wind up back in that land for an everlasting possession. Right now, somebody else is dwelling in the land, and they have taken your land, taken your name, and taken your identity. But still in all, that land belongs to you, Israel, and you will wind up back in that land. Go ahead and continue to read. Verse 9. Go ahead and read. And God said unto Abraham, uh -huh. Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. And he said, not only you, Abraham, but he said, you and your seed after you mm. in your generations. Now the Lord going to give Abraham a sign of the covenant, and we're going to understand that this covenant don't just apply to Israel. It applies to the strange as well, that not of Abraham's natural seed. Go ahead and continue read. This is my covenant which you shall keep uh -huh. between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Now he said, every man child among you must be circumcised, but we're going to find out when we get to dealing with this seed here, it's not just dealing with Abraham's natural seed, but it's dealing with his spiritual seed as well. Mm -hmm. And who is Abraham's spiritual seed? All those that will serve the true and living God, right. they are Abraham's seed. Go ahead, continue reading. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. Now, wait a minute. He said, you know, this is my covenant. He said, you know, every male among you shall be circumcised, and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. Go ahead, read on. And it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Uh -huh. Now, he, he made this covenant with Abraham when Abraham was yet uncircumcised, mm -hmm. right? That's right. You know, I have a reason for uh, making that statement because when you get over the New Testament, there's some scriptures that they use to try and discredit circumcision. Yeah. So now he made the covenant when Abraham was in uncircumcision, didn't he? That's right. But he gave him circumcision as a sign of the covenant. And we're going to find out it was not just with Abraham not to see. Look at what the covenant says. Go ahead, continue to read. 12. Go ahead. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Now he said, when you're eight days old, you're supposed to be circumcised. However, 
if your father 